Okay, we are now joined by Jeff Gordon, driver of the number 24 Pepsi Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Sunday's Quick and Loans Race for Heroes 500 will be Jeff Gordon's final start here at Phoenix International Raceway. Jeff, you've had a great career here, average of 10.9. Obviously, you want to have another good run this weekend, but you're the one driver that's punched his ticket already to Homestead Miami Speedway. Still, a win would be great for you this weekend, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, right now we're all about just team building and momentum and confidence, uh, even though very little that we learn here this weekend. The tire is completely different. The track's completely different. The surface is completely different. It's still an important race. Um, you know, this, this track really throughout my whole career has just been one that I've been consistent at. I've never been great here um, in, in, until that, that last race before they repaved it. But uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very fun, exciting, challenging racetrack, and um, we're working really hard to, to try to get another win. Great. We'll open it up to questions on the floor. Please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Nate up here. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Jeff, before Texas, you said because the tire is the same as at Homestead, you said it was important to build confidence with a good finish there and, and be ready to go in the championship round in Miami with, with that. Did you? I know a ninth wasn't quite what you wanted, but do, do, you, do you feel as if Texas was an indicator that you can, you can run well at Homestead? Well, I thought we learned some things that can make us a little bit better at Homestead. It, it, you know, Homestead is different than, than what Texas is. Um, but, yeah, it didn't go as well as we would have liked it to have gone. Um, but, you know, I, I still feel very confident about Homestead just because of the way that track is. Um, but we got to be a little bit better than we were at Texas. All right, let's go with Jeff. Jeff Clark, USA Today. Knowing what you know now about both chase formats, is this one harder to win a championship in? I don't know. This is the best I've 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 been positioned in a very long time, so uh, I'm kind of liking it. Um, you know, it, it, I think it still comes the, the format prior to this. Those ten racetracks are just so crucial. If you're good at those ten racetracks, you have an excellent shot at winning the championship. In this format, uh, if you can be solid, you know, through the tracks that maybe you're not as great at, but then really nail the ones that you are like we did with with martinsville then uh, you know in, in that in that sense um it could maybe somewhat be easier but it still all comes down to homestead i think in that sense it's harder because uh you know you're you're up against three other drivers and teams on equal uh terms and and you have to finish ahead of of, of the you know the, those drivers especially you know, seems like we've already seen last year, and, and I'm curious to see how it ends, uh, which, which you know, three others are going to Homestead of just how competitive, you know, they are. Um, and, and, I, and I think they're all going to, to rise to the occasion in Homestead. And in that sense, yeah, this, I think it's somewhat harder. I mean, we've seen last couple of years where basically to, to win it, you had to win the race. And that's, that's, that's a lot to ask. That's a lot of pressure. Okay, we'll go with Mike and then John. Mike Embry, USA Today. Uh, Jeff, you've had a, a list of great crew chiefs over the years. How, how is Allen different from the others? And um, how do you see him going into the winner-take-all kind of situation you'll be in next week? Yeah, I think it suits him really, really well. Um, you know, I think Alan, what, what se separates him is just his, his engineering background and understanding of, of the cars and the aerodynamics. Um, you know, he just has a, a really vast uh, depth of knowledge uh, with that. And, and it allows him to, when, when he's talking to the, whether it be the body shop and how they're building the, the bodies or the other engineers, you know, he just he's just on their level and connects with them, and I think that uh, earns a lot of respect. Certainly, for, from from my standpoint, is why I wanted to work with him so bad, and, and why I've enjoyed working with him so bad. Um, you know, is because he's just he's just so good with the, with, with the cars. Um, I think you know he's definitely had to to work and hone his skills on on. Um, how to be that that confident, powerful leader? He's he's become extremely good at it, uh, but I do think that's probably something that that 
uh, was not as natural to him as the engineering. And then, um, you know, he's got a tremendous work ethic and, and drive. And that, to me, is what makes a great crew chief when, you know, when I think back um, to me and Ray or I look at other crew chiefs in, in, at Hendrick in, in the garage, you know, the ones that just are, are willing to sacrifice everything and put that kind of effort into it are the ones that are successful, and that, that's what Alan does. John? John Orievitz with ESPN.com. Jeff, three to go, two to go. They're, they're counting down the races like laps. Uh, as the reality that this phase of your life is coming to an end, is, is it sinking in as the, as the races count down? It's becoming a little more real. Um, you know, I think it's all going to gonna sink in ne next week. Although, I will say with everything now that's happened because of that Martinsville win, the schedule's gotten really, really uh, hectic. So it's going to keep my mind off of, of, of everything up until race day. And I don't know if it's going to hit me prior to the race or if it's going to hit me after the race, but it's going to hit me. <laughs> it's definitely going to hit me. Um, but uh, we've just had so much still left to accomplish in business you know, at hand that, that it, it, it has not hit me yet. Um, you know, we've, we've just been in, in planning mode for trying to be in the chase, planning mode for trying to make it to Homestead as a team, been in planning mode for, um, you know, entertaining friends and family at Homestead. This is long before we were ever in the chase. So, I mean, the cool thing is we're going there to celebrate regardless, uh, you know, of, of that, that, that moment and that day and, 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 and sharing that with the people that have supported me over the years, have been closest to me. Um, when, when Martinsville happened, it just made that, that much more exciting. And, and of course, the, 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 the people that hadn't RSVP'd all of a sudden started RSVP. And so uh, it, it did create a few, uh, a little more work for, for, Luckily, not me so much, but but our team that's that's handling all that. We'll go in the back there, then George, and then Wolfgang. Uh, Jeff David Swope with ESPN Radio Albuquerque. Uh, just to kind of follow up on that question a little bit, uh, have you given yourself an opportunity to consider how satisfying it's going to be to actually win the race in Miami, and how that'll cap off just a, a tremendous uh, tremendous career that you've had? I, I mean, I haven't. Uh, you know, I, and I won't. I, I'm a person that lives in the moment, and, and just like in Martinsville, I wasn't, I didn't go into that race expecting us to win or, or think about what that was going to be like if we did win, but you saw the raw emotion of what, what, what that win meant to me. That's nothing compared to what you'll see in Homestead if we do that. <laughs> I literally would be climbing the fences. <laughs> go ahead, George. I'll, I'll be down with a bad back for the next week, but it'll all be worth it. Uh, uh, Jeff, right here, uh, George Diaz, Orlando Sentinel. I have to ask you an uh, update on the ponies, and do you still hate Eddie Gossage? Or? I think he hates me. Um, no, I'm joking. It, it, it really, I mean, my, my kids, uh, Ingrid and the kids got there the next day, and we, we immediately put them in the car, and we drove out to the stables where they were at and, and visited with them, and and you know, of course, my daughter just immediately fell in love, and they're the cutest things. I mean, we we had a lot of fun with them. So, you know, we we just ever since then, really, or even after they were given uh, to us, we were just in the planning stages, trying to figure out how to how to how to do all this, how to get them to North Carolina, how to, where to put them, who does who's going to take care of them, how often we're going to get to visit with them. So, that's that's where we're at right now. We'll go Wolf. Thanks, Eddie. Tom, and then finish up with Bob. Uh, Wolfgang Munzer from Germany, Ranch Park Press Agency. Uh, Jeff, two more races here in Homestead, and then you're not a race driver anymore. In, in the future, is the team ownership an option for you? Uh, yeah, the one that currently exists uh, with, with a, a great partner, Rick Hendrick. But I, I'll, I'll never see myself expanding um, any, any further than, than that. We'll go Tom and then finish up with Bob. Hi, Jeff. Tom Jensen, FoxSports.com. Got to ask you, everybody's asking you about retirement in the last race at Homestead. What do you remember about coming here and racing Silver Crown Series and winning here in the Copper World Classic and back in the day? Yeah, that was, that was huge. Um, you know, I, I mean, without 
boring you too many details and going too in depth uh, on it. Yeah, I, it kind of all started with the midget uh, the year before, uh, and in all of a sudden it, it brought me back to my pavement days and quarter midgets and go-karts and and I realized that uh, I just took to it very very well plus I had great cars uh, and and that led to that that car that that I drove here um, you know for the Eads and, and it was a, you know, it was a beast uh, chassis and and at that time we were winning everything in those cars on the pavement and and, and um, you know that that was a big year, um, you know, for us to to do, uh, you know, some great things in in at, at a level in USAC that that was uh, being recognized, and and plus I was racing. Uh, I think that was ninety, right? Was that ninety or eighty nine that I won here? No, I can't. yeah. So that was also the same year that I was you know pursuing NASCAR. So it was a huge year for me and all those things, all those wins like that meant the world to me. I was getting raced against Ken Schrader and, uh, you know, guys that, uh, were, were big time race car drivers. And I wanted, I wanted to race against them. I wanted to beat them and I wanted to, to follow in their footsteps. And, and moments like this here were, th were, were huge moments that led to that happening. And we'll finish up with Bob, uh, Bob Parker's ESPN. Um, the, the general view is that you'd have a few more championships if it wasn't for the chase. Have you privately kind of cursed the chase over the last 10 years? And considering the season that you've had, would there be any poetic justice if you win it this year? Oh, that would be the, the most ultimate poetic justice ever. Uh, <laughs> um, well, the one thing I'll never forget was the the moment I was standing on a dock in in Key West, Florida, on a on a NASCAR boat trip when Brian France and Mike Kelton told me what they were planning on doing with the chase format, and I laughed in their faces because I thought that was the most hilarious thing I'd ever heard of, because I thought it was a joke, and then I quickly realized that it was not a joke, and I was pulling the laughs back into my my mouth. <laughs> Um, I'm like, you're serious? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my. I, so, you know, when I heard that news, of course I didn't like it. I mean, I, I felt like the point system was just fine for me. <laughs> um, I don't think you can go back and look at a, accumulating points under the old system with, in the new system, in the newer, in that newer system. You know, everybody races differently, uh, under, under each point system and what it takes. And so I don't know if, you could, you know, we can all sit here and, and, and speculate and talk about it and, and, and wonder what could have been if the old point system had stayed the same. There's no doubt in my mind it suited my driving style. You know, I, I'm, I, I, the reason why, I, you know, was able to win at so many different tracks is because of the consistency that, that our team had and I had at all the different tracks. And that, that paid off when you're trying to win a championship under a 36 or however many race schedule the the season was um you know i didn't want to see it come down to those final 10 because not all those final 10 were tracks that i think suited me and and yet they suited some others pretty well and and so i i, I felt like it was not benefiting me as much so of course i i wish it hadn't changed but when i look at the sport uh, you know from 10,000 feet. I think I love it. I, I, I think it's exciting. Uh, and even this new format, I think is even better. Uh, and, you know, I, I support it. I always have, even though maybe it hasn't always suited me. I think that um, I try to not be so selfish in that and, and think of what's best for the sport, because in the bot, at the end of the day, what's best for the sport is, is best for me, best for our team, best for all the teams out there and best for you guys too. Thanks, Jeff. Thank uh, you. With, with that, I'd like to introduce Zach Emmons, Director of Communications here at Phoenix International Raceway, who has a brief presentation. I don't need a presentation. <laughs> Name the track after me. <laughs> it, it can't get any better than that. Well, as, as Jeff just mentioned, uh, as all of you guys know, Sunday, uh, Phoenix International Raceway will be known as Jeff Gordon Raceway. Uh, in addition, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey has proclaimed Sunday, November the 15th, to be Jeff Gordon Day in the state of Arizona. And here, to, on behalf of Governor Ducey, to present Jeff with a uh, copy. It of the does proclamation. get better. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here to present Jeff with a copy of the proclamation on behalf of Governor Ducey is Tom Callahan. Tom, would you join us up here for a quick photo, please? It's a little better. Yeah, it does. Very nice Thank to you. meet you. Appreciate it. Nice to meet you. Real quick. You guys can right. look at Mike right here. Right here. Smile. Perfect. And now 
these guys then, right here, and then towards the back. Yep. All right, guys, thanks. Then real quick to the back of the room to the TV cameras. Thank you, gentlemen, very much. Jeff, thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good luck to you. Thank you.